today. I think I finished off yesterday showing you how much I'd got cut out. I still have more things to do. So this fabric, I had enough to cut out the 6563 t-shirt, but I also had enough to cut out the bodice of a 6380, and this looks really good with the pink viscose that is in my Make 9. So I've cut out the bodice front and bodice back. There wasn't enough to do the sleeves, but I did say I wanted to do a sleeveless one of these. So I need to cut out the lining pieces for the bodice, and then I need to cut out the pink midriff and skirt pieces. I think this time... I don't know, I I like how full the blue one is with the lining, so I might cut out a lining as well. And then I did want to make a skirt out of that pink viscose as well, a plain skirt, so I'm thinking I'm going to cut a half circle skirt out of it at the same time, because I have five metres of it. We'll see what I have left after, after those two things have been cut out. Yeah, I'm kind of just in a kind of cutting out mood. I've been... <laughs> umming and ahhing about whether I just go straight in with the denim for those trousers but it would be stupid. I have calico here that cost me £4 per metre and that denim is £10 per metre. I just have the calicos on a roll, I need to iron it and unroll it and it's just a bit of a pain so I need to stop being lazy and get the calico unrolled, ironed, and then I can cut out the 9257 trousers out of that because the likelihood of those trousers fitting me out of the packet, the only alteration I've done to them so far is to measure the crotch depth and add three inches to the crotch depth because I have a really long torso so that's a standard alteration that I need to do pretty much to any time I make any kind of trousers. I think it would be very silly of me to just cut straight into my denim because it's not cheap denim. Ten I mean £10 a metre is reasonably priced but it's not like £4 a metre calico so yeah. It's not like I'm making stretch tight jeans where the fabric that you use affects the fit because if I was doing that then I would probably cut into the denim and have ordered twice as much of the denim because different denims affect fit differently for sort of tighter jeans I believe I've never made jeans so I I, I, I'm, I think I'm saying things that are correct but because these are wide leg trousers and this denim has no stretch in it and according to the measurements that should fit me <sighs> yeah it'll be fine. <laughs> so I've also got some fabric left over from the 8997 that I made at the beginning of the year and I think I have enough of it to cut out a half circle skirt so I might get that done as well. I'm hoping I might have enough of that fabric left to then make a waistcoat. I think that would be quite nice. So yeah I'm I have a lot of projects cut out. Uh, let's see dress, another dress, shirt dress, two shirts and the woven t-shirt pattern and the top of a dress at the moment i'm hoping to cut out the rest of that dress and two more skirts and then i think i probably ought to stop cutting out and start sewing some of that up yeah i mean if i if I think I told you yesterday this is looking a bit more messy back here because I got a lot of the fabrics out that I was hoping to make that t-shirt that uh, 6563 out of and it takes 1.1 centi uh, centimeters 1.1 meter of fabric and a lot of these I have exactly a meter or less so it's not going to work unfortunately but I'm thinking that I have some plans that I would like to try with a shirt I think that if I color blocked it was so like I had like a plain fabric for the collar and then the print fabric for the main body of the shirt that would work that's what I think I'm going to do with the remnants from the banana leaf Dolce & Gabbana print as well lots and lots of plans <laughs> lots and lots of plans I want to make them all I'm going to start cutting out again I probably needs a few more time lapses for you guys and then hopefully some sewing tomorrow which will be exciting okay i've just finished sewing up the muslin for the trousers and i'm really glad that i did do a muslin it fits really well at the waist but it's super tight i mean i can get them on i can get them done up but they're very tight kind of uh, just from from here down to the hips so i need to go back to the pattern and add some more room here my first my first, very first fly front zip, which I think went in really well. I like them. I like the idea of them. I like the idea of fly fronted trousers. And like I say, I want these to look kind of denim jean like. But the trousers that I have that I enjoy wearing are super wide legged, zip up at the back. 
so I'm just I'm kind of thinking am I only am I only putting in going for a fly fronted pair because they look that you know it's sort of like it's a, a, a jean look-alike but given that I mean I don't they don't have to be like jeans do they they don't they could just be denim wide leg trousers I could use a pattern mind you the pattern that I have is super tight on me now as well oh I don't know I don't know I don't know so yeah I'm not sure I'm not sure I am what I'm gonna do is play around with the hip line on the pattern and I'm gonna make myself a pair of shorts um, I'm not showing you these on because they're see-through and I'm sorry but no <laughs> nobody needs to see me in my underwear on the internet yeah I think what I'll do I, I'll just make them so short length so I don't waste all this fabric again the length on these is really good I, I think I actually need to add just an inch to the bottom of it so that I can have the cuff that I want the hem on this is meant to be an inch and a quarter and the hem that I would use on these is five eighths of an inch so I just need to add a little bit more length to the hem I don't know because these pleats are meant to be released but if I release these it's just gonna it's, it's not gonna look very flattering over my stomach so I'm not sure. I'm gonna go back to the pattern, see if I can adjust it to the hips to add a little bit more room in the hips. And if I can do that and then make up a shorts version of it, and if I like that, then I'll cut into the denim. If not, I will try a different pattern because I have many, many trouser patterns in there. I mean, the fabric I've bought before anyone says, why don't I just make a pair of jeans in it? It's not, it's not jean fabric. It's just denim look fabric. It's, it's too lightweight to be made into jeans 100% I can't just make jeans with it that's why I, that's why I got the lighter weight fabric so that it wouldn't look so sticky outy in such wide leg trousers but the waist fits really well on this and like I say my first fly front zip went in there were a few kind of like moments where I was like oh how am I going to do this the other thing is I have no idea how I would finish the insides of this you can't really French seam a lot of this and there's some, it would, I, you know I don't really like overlocking the inside of woven garments but I think I probably would have to with this one or bias binding I suppose, I could make some bias binding but yeah I'm glad I tried them, I'm really glad I didn't cut into my denim I'm glad that I got this, the, fabric, the calico out and, and pressed it. I'm going to have to get it out and press some more of it, it's, like I say, because I need to make another version of these. I like the idea of these I'm going to have a look through my trouser patterns and see if there's anything else in there that might work better. But we'll see. We shall see. They are very wide legged and I like that a lot. It's about 20 to 6 and dinner's probably going to be fairly soon. Dad's cooking this evening which is very nice of him. Once I've eaten I'll probably come back down here to do some more sewing. Or will I come down here and alter the pattern? Not sure. <laughs> Not sure. We shall see. But very glad I didn't cut into my proper denim. I got my cream cotton skirt made. As you can see, the uh, lining's already massively dropped on the bias. I don't think this skirt fabric is going to, though. I uh, have made the Vogue 8997 out of this. It's the cotton bisou, I think it's called, from Lady McElroy. Of course, when I was sewing this, I pricked my finger and then got blood all over the skirt. I've washed, it looks worse on camera than it does in real life. I've washed it out as much as I can and I have got a stain remover on the way. I really hope it comes out. If not, I'm going to have to think about probably dyeing this skirt or something. Then I have put bias binding on my half circle skirt but I've looking at this fabric, it's really see-through. So what I'm going to do is use the Butterick 6380 skirt as a lining and use the half circle skirt as the overskirt for this dress and it will be interesting to see what it looks like with a half circle skirt on it and I also got two little scrunchies sewn up as well so it's been a productive day. So I am going to attempt to add some more room for the hips in those trousers that I made earlier. Like I said, I'm sorry I didn't show you what they look like on, but they are literally see-through, so no. <laughs> but I've also pulled out a couple more trouser patterns that I think may work better for me. They have even more volume in them. <laughs> And it does say they can be made with lightweight cottons, which that denim is, so I don't know, we'll see. I will I will give those trousers the 9157. I will try and make them a little bit 
better for me we shall see i'm pleased with everything i've got done today i really like that skirt i really hope i can get that stain out of it it was just so typical like right just pricked myself with a pin hadn't noticed it was bleeding and then just dropped it oh on the skirt no fingers crossed that'll come out like i say i have a specific blood stain remover coming and hopefully that will arrive on monday if not tuesday that skirt the lining has definitely dropped on the bias i don't think the skirt fabric is going to and then as i mentioned this one's pretty see-through so whilst I was hoping to get a separate skirt and dress out of this fabric. I do think it would be better for this to be the over overskirt for the Butterick 6380. And I've been meaning to put a different skirt type on that dress anyway, so it'll be interesting to see how that turns out. But it is quite late, it's quarter to 11, so I'm going to call it a night and go and sit with Chi. Probably watch some friends or something. I haven't got around to watching the reunion yet because I don't have I don't have that on my fire stick, so I'm going to watch it down in the main living room. Uh, Mum and Dad were watching it earlier and I listened to some of it, but yes, I'm looking forward to seeing that. But uh, yeah, I hope you've enjoyed the last couple of days. I'm not sure how interesting they're going to be because there's not really any finished items other than scrunchies and you know a skirt but yeah i hope you've enjoyed them and i will see you again very soon bye good morning lovely peeps happy sunday i am back down in the sewing room obviously i am going to continue working on the skirt portion of the butterick 6380 because I have pink thread on my machine so I need to sew the skirt pieces together for that then I'm going to put some white thread in my machine and I can work on the bodice and then the two 6563s that I've cut out as well because both of those need white thread then I can move on to shirts and shirt dresses because they need white thread too so I, I mean I'm not planning on there's no, no way that all of that's going to happen in one day but that's the that's the idea i'm trying to also work out where i'm going to show you guys my finished makes i haven't got room in my bedroom to do it anymore and i can't think of anywhere in the house that has a plain enough background and enough space in front of it that I could show you either so I think it's gonna to have to be outside again which is fine at this time of year mostly but for the winter it's gonna be a bit more difficult so I need to think about where I'm gonna show you my finished makes I suppose I could do it in here because if I push put this table down push this cutting table right to the side I can get the camera far enough back there that I could do it in front of the wall of fabric as it were i'll have to see how that looks because i do prefer a plainer background but then having said that my last background was fairly clutterful and um not minimalist at all wasn't it so yeah the white skirt the stain on the back it's a light stain and i probably would get away with nobody noticing it if it doesn't come out but like i said i've got stain remover coming so hopefully it will and it's a washable skirt so once it's hemmed and the outer layer is definitely not dropping. Yeah, <laughs> the outer layer has not dropped at all, but the uh, the lining has dropped massively. So I'm gonna give that a couple more days to hang up. I haven't ironed the back of the skirt because I don't wanna set the stain in. The back seam might be looking a little bit poofy up there, but that's just, like I say, that's just because I don't wanna set the stain with heat. I, I don't know if that's a correct thing, but I have it in my head that, that that's a thing. So I've avoided ironing that particular bit i think i might also need to move the bar from the hook and bar that i've sewn in i don't think it's quite far enough over i've started doing that putting the zip up to the waistband and then putting the hooks and bars on the waistbands because the skirts where i've got the hook uh, the zip going all right the way through the waistband when i wear them the because there's more seam allowance and fabric at the waistband junction the, the invisible zip becomes way more visible so i've started putting zips just to the waistband which was trying to line this yesterday and put the waistband on the correct way was so yeah there's a little bit of unpicking involved <laughs> but never mind so sewing today actual sewing i i may put you on time lapse for a little bit of it because I'm not sure what else I'm going to film otherwise. I am currently listening to Rule of Wolves 
which is, there's a duology, didn't know that, um, by Lee Bardugo, who wrote Shadow and Bone. And so I've listened to all three Shadow and Bone books. I've listened to the Six of Crow books, as that was a duology as well. And I'm now in the second book of the King of Scars, Rule of Wolves duology. And it's very good. I'm very much enjoying this. I've kind of powered through all of those uh, books pretty quickly. And the Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes was brilliant. It was really, really good. If you liked The Hunger Games, it was uh, definitely worth a read or a listen. Anyway, so, sewing. Actual sewing. I'm gonna get on with that and stop waffling at you. One eternity later. Okay, so I said I wanted to try one of these sleeveless and I really like how it looks. I haven't really been wearing very much sleeveless things because I... <laughs> my arms are very untoned and have not been wanting to show them off but you know what summer's coming hopefully so i thought i would give this a go and this is also with the half circle skirt pink skirt that i cut out over the top and then underneath is the skirt that comes with this pattern there is a little bit more fullness in the half circle skirt but not loads but i do really like how it looks I really really like this. So many of you were saying for the blue one not to put a belt on with it. I mean I haven't tried it so I don't know. My, my initial instinct is always to kind of put a belt on with everything but I don't know. We'll have to see. We'll have to see. These are obviously not the styling videos because I haven't got makeup on or my hair done or my shoes, shoes on and things like that. Like I said earlier today I'm trying to work out a space that I can do it. I think there might be somewhere in the back garden but I really like an indoor space that I can show you my makes and I'm not sure that this one's going to work because it, it, yeah there's just not enough room. It might work lengthways down there though so we'll have to have a play around with that. This was really easy to do. Lots of you guys have been asking for a tutorial on how to clean finish the armholes on a sleeveless dress and I think if you look at any of my sew alongs like the A577 for example I know I show you how I do it but I did exactly the same thing with this one. Working out how to get these little loops in was a little bit difficult to begin with and <laughs> when once I'd done one side I made it really complicated for myself. Once I'd done one side, I then realised how I could do the other side and it was much, much easier. I'm really glad that I have used up the last of this fabric. I have a good, weird size piece left that I probably will be able to get maybe the interior of a purse or something like that out of. I do have the 6563 t-shirt cut out of it as well, so that's going to be the next thing that I sew. I haven't finished this dress, it still needs hemming, but yeah, I'm going to let that hang for a good long while because it's definitely going to drop in the bias. This is the third fabric from my Make 9 used, so that's good. I am ploughing through them. I have the fourth and fifth cut out, so that's also good. There's another dress fabric and then I think, yeah, three of them are poor bottom weight fabrics that I was hoping to make trousers out of. We all know how the 9257 went and I am going to try and you know play around with the hip width on that pattern but the other ones I was thinking I might do is the Vogue 1772 and it does say that you can use lightweight gabardine cotton blends with this which is pretty much the weight of that denim that I've got. I also got out the Mimi G8889 because I just really really love those. I think they're gorgeous. And then I also got out the Simplicity 8457 which is designed to be for a curvy slim or average figure. So I'm thinking maybe I ought to try this one as well. It wouldn't be too difficult to take the fly front detail and move it, put it on this one from, this has got a side zipper. I could give that a try as well. But Sorry, I'm just talking boobs now, aren't I? <laughs> yeah, I, I really, let me just, I'm gonna take you over there, hang on a sec. So yeah, I'm really, really pleased with this dress. I do like sleeveless dresses, especially in the summer. And also this will be really, really easy to put under jumpers and things like that. Mum's just knit me an amazing jumper, which I still have to show you guys, but I could definitely wear it over the top of this dress and have it look like a top and skirt. It's a royal blue color, so I think that would work. I don't think I'm gonna put buttons down the front of this one. 
I don't think it needs it. I could always do that later though if I wanted to. And I'm glad that I put a different skirt type on the bottom of this because like, it's been something that I've been thinking to try for a while as well. So I'm really glad that I've done that. All I need to do is put in one of my scrunchies and I've got a matching, matching outfit. And I have some shoes that will go with this perfectly as well. So yay, new dress, another new dress. So yes, like I say, I have this fabric in the 6563 and I also cut out a plain white one, which is the, I used plain white viscose for the lining of this top and I cut out a 6563 out of that lining fabric as well because I kind of thought, you know, I love my sew over it cow neck tee in white stretch viscose so I thought I would give it a try in some woven viscose and see if that becomes something that I wear quite often. And I have it in my head that I want to wear it with that cream skirt and some tan accessories and a, one of my cream cardigans that mum's knit for me. I think that would look really really smart. I'm not sure. <laughs> but I think it would. That's what I'm going to work on next is the two 6563 t-shirts and probably will get those done today as well. It's currently four o'clock. I am making dinner this evening. We are having steak and potato dauphinois which is going to be very nice. So I'm going to head up to the main house at around half five-ish to go and cook and then I'll be back here this evening for some more sewing, working my way through all those patterns that I've cut out. I need to cut out interfacing for the two shirts and the shirt dress. So I think once I've done the t-shirts, I'm gonna work on the Butterick 6244 bodice and Vogue 9357 skirt combo that I have cut out and see how they come out. Oh, and I've also tried to modify the KB gray dress. I'd really like to use that bodice for the hydrangea story cotton lawn that Jennifer got me for my birthday last year. Although I am thinking that this might be a really nice bodice to use because uh, it is a little strappy dress. Use this one with the tiered ruffled skirt that I want to put onto that particular fabric. So yeah and that'll be the that's another of my make nine fabrics so I'm, I'm getting there. I am getting there. Anyway I'm gonna get on with sewing the t-shirts, take this off, hang this up, then get on with sewing the t-shirts and I'll show you how I get on a little bit later. Okay, I do have a black bra on underneath this one, but this is the white viscose woven t-shirt 6563. I, I'm gonna have to get used to that number because I do love this top and there will be more of them. I'm not one for plain things, as you guys know, so I'm not sure how often this one will get worn, but I did also make one out of the floral viscose, so let me show you that. Okay, so this is the floral viscose. The uh, So I cut this out first and then from the remnants I cut out the top of the pink dress back there. I did get a couple of hair scrunchies and as I say I've got like a piece left over that I can probably get the lining of a bag out of as well. Yeah having put the two of them on I'd much prefer the patterned one to the plain one. I'm sure I'll get loads of use out of the plain one but I do really love this print and I'm really pleased that I've got three garments out of it now because the first thing I made was the sew over at Eve dress. Really pleased with how these t-shirts have come out. I call them t-shirts, I mean they're woven tops but they're the they're the kind of thing that I would treat as a t-shirt uh, if, that, if that makes sense. So I'm going to start work on the 6244 bodice and 9357 skirt out of this quilting cotton Michael Miller bed of roses although to me they look like peonies so I'm going to start work on that dress next and uh, see how that comes out but I'm really pleased with these and there would have been I, I, I think I pulled out about five or six lengths of fabric that I was hoping to cut these t-shirts out of and I just I was just out by about 10 centimeters because this does take one point one meter of fabric. There probably would have been ooh, many more of these if I could have squeezed it out of some of those fabrics but I'm determined to make tops out of them that aren't just camisoles <laughs> so I will find a I will find a pattern that will work for small amounts of fabric. I will but yeah really pleased with these. They're going to be worn a lot over the coming months I'm sure. Got the bodice of the KB grey dress sewn up and the waist fits but I need to tweak the top edge a little bit. I have also sewn up the Vogue 9357 skirt portion. There are 
some giant pockets in there. I have the bodice of the 6244 to go and I'm going to start on that tomorrow. But I thought I'd do the bit that I know how to do this evening. Yeah, I'm going to call it a night because it is about 11 o'clock. So it's about time that I go to bed. <laughs> so I am going to say goodnight. I hope you've enjoyed what I've been up to the last couple of days and I will see you all very soon. Bye.